So far you've mostly seen me prototyping on a breadboard. These guys come with rows of holes that are interconnected. Each row represents five holes that connect to each other. And so when you place one end over here and one wire over here, that creates a solderless connection. So you can build a circuit easily without soldering anything. However, if you want to make a project more durable, we recommend switching to solder. On some breadboards, you'll also see outer rails. In this case, this entire line marked in blue is connected together, and the same with this one marked in red. These usually have markings to indicate power and ground. Although these aren't inherent properties of the breadboard and you can use them for anything, it's very useful for keeping track when you're doing a complex project. Once you're ready to make your project a little more permanent, that's where solder comes in. Solder traditionally contains lead with a rosin core that helps it flow, uh, but they also make lead free, which is a little bit safer. If you're working with regular solder, be sure to wash your hands. Today I'm soldering headers onto this Adafruit feather board. This is so that I can easily plug wires into it and prototype things without soldering, just like in a breadboard. I can also use it to mount this LED shield. But I've only just begun. What I've done here is tack soldered the headers on. That means that I got it all nice and squared up against the board. I set it on a table like that, made sure that the headers were on straight. Then I soldered on one pin in each row to hold the headers in place. Because once you've got the whole row soldered, it becomes really difficult to get them off. And you'll have to use something like solder wick and end up with a really messy board. <laughs> My next step is to solder the rest of the pins in. I'm going to clip it into this third hand, which comes with a magnifying glass and two alligator clips to hold stuff together. I'm going to be clipping directly on top of the antenna of the built-in ESP8266 module, which I think will be okay, as long as I'm gentle. My soldering iron has a little bit of solder on the tip that helps me make good thermal contact. I'm going to snug it up against one of the pins and sockets and bring in the solder from the other side. I add just enough to get a nice little cone of solder on there. It should be concave on all sides, but you still can't see any of the socket around it. Bringing the iron and the solder in from opposite directions makes it so that the solder sticks to your circuit and not to the iron. When you're done soldering, make sure that you wash your hands because lead can get through your skin, and you don't want it getting on the food you eat either.